Hey guys, today you're going to learn how to play some power ballad progressions and riffs. So you're about to learn three power ballad progressions and riffs, and these are a lot of fun to play. They just make you feel good inside when you're jamming to them. So we're going to learn three progressions and riffs, but real quick, you'll notice that each riff that you're going to learn, each progression is in a different key, and I'll explain more why that is at the end of this video and why that's so important. So hang around till the end of the video. Let's jump right into the lesson. Alright, so this first riff is really simple, but extremely interesting and really fun to play. Now, it's simple because we're only playing three chords. That is it. It may sound like we're throwing some more chords in there, and that's because we're not playing the same pattern twice. We're actually playing the pattern, then we're kind of playing it in reverse. So it gives it that little spice to make it sound a little different and kind of captivates the listener. You guys hear me talk about that a lot. When you're when you're playing guitar, when you're writing music, you want to reach out and captivate the listener, captivate the person that your audience, the person is hearing your music, okay? And that's one good way to do it. It's just switching things up a little bit. So we've got a progression. We're in the key of D minor here, okay? And again, Three chords, three power chords, the D power chord, the B flat, and the C. Okay, so we play that and then we do a little riff, right? And then the second part to that is we actually reverse that pattern and then what do we do? We play a little riff. We like to throw those riffs in because we don't want to always just play power chords. And I know I mention this a lot on my videos. I want you guys to get used to integrating riffs with those chord structures, with those progressions, because that's what makes music a little bit more interesting. So let me go through this. I'll go. I'll break this down into two little pieces. Let's go over that first part first, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to play it slow, and I'll throw up the tabs, and I'll do the same for the second part. So here's the first part. <laughs> Now let's talk briefly about that little riff that we do on the C power chord there. Really, if you think about it like this, it'll kind of simplify it for you, okay? If you're having trouble with that part, and I'll just play that little piece one more time for you, but we're just going back and forth between two strings, the A and the D string, and we're using downstrokes. So we're going back and forth between the two, using the downstrokes and palm muting, and we're just doing one little finger movement there. So let's uh, zoom in on this so you can see how, how I'm playing this. That's it. Just keep it keep it simple in your head as we're going through this. You're just going back and forth between those two strings. All right, let's move on to the second part to this first power ballad progression here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to break that down. I just want to play the whole thing for you just so you remember it. You know, you get that in your head uh, because power ballads stuck in your head is just a good thing. It's going to be a great day today. <laughs> okay, so we're reversing that second half. We're reversing that pattern again, which this just adds another another layer to the song that you're writing here okay and i'm making these up as we go along by the way as you guys already know that so <laughs> we're just reversing the pattern then playing a riff okay so <laughs> A 
again, we just reverse the pattern. We just do the opposite and then we're adding that little riff. So here's the little riff. <laughs> All right, so let's go through that entire power ballad progression one more time. So this I consider the four magical chords, and I mean magic because they just scream power ballad and magic. So we're playing an E minor, a C, a G, and a D, okay, the first time around. Now the second time around, we're only playing three chords. We go E minor, uh, C, and D. And I say E minor, we're just playing the power chord E, right? Just that, that power chord. But if you had like an acoustic strumming behind you playing this riff, they would be playing the E minor, okay? Which would sound pretty cool, by the way, having that acoustic with those power chords. Anyway, I'm getting off on a rabbit's trail here. So let's learn this riff. So again, like the first riff that we learned, I'll break this progression down into two parts because there's two sections here. Let's go over that first part here. I'm going to play this fairly slow and I'll throw up the tabs for you. That little riff here, I want to kind of focus on that because the challenge you might have on this, uh, some of you might have, is doing that riff in between those chords, right? And making that transition smooth. So I want you to go through this really slow. I'm gonna play this, uh, I'm gonna play this through again, but we're gonna focus on the little riff here, okay? <laughs> The little trick here, a little tip I'll give you is we're on the E string playing that riff, okay, three, five, and seven. After that, you can you can strike or pick rather that next string, that open A string with that D chord. And actually I encourage you to do that because that's the fifth note, the fifth lower octave of the D. So that fits in that little chord there. And actually it makes that D sound a lot heavier than what it would be if you just played a regular D chord, okay? And I think I went over this in a prior in a prior lesson. All right, so let's move on to the second part of the riff, and actually things get uh, a little less complex, if you will. We're only playing three chords. We're gonna play the E, or E minor rather, but the E power chord, then C, then D. Then we're gonna play a similar little riff that you learned in the first progression that we went over. So let's go through that. I'm gonna play this slow, and I'll throw up the tabs for you. Okay, and you remember that we played that actually with the C power chord in the first progression that we learned, okay? All we're doing is just playing it in a different spot here. So let's zoom in on this. Again, it's that back and forth between those two strings, the A and the D string, but we're on the D power chord. And we got a little palm mute going there and we're doing down strokes, okay? Gives it that nice edge. So let's go through this entire pattern, this entire progression once more. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Alright, this progression is super fun to play. What's really cool is we kind of start out as if we're going on the journey of those four magical chords, like the progression we played in the second one, the one we just went over. However, we kind of surprise the listener a little bit. They're expecting us to go to that A, that fourth chord to be an A, but we take them on a different journey, and you take yourself as a guitar player on a little bit different journey, and that's what makes writing music and, and playing music so exciting because there's different paths that you can go down, okay? So we start out on a B power chord with a B power chord. Now, we're in the key of B minor, so I always like to say if you're playing an acoustic behind this little riff here in the progression, that would be a B minor. So you're playing a B power chord, and we're doing some little riffs with these chords, as you heard, and we'll go through those as well. And again, this is, this is broken down into two parts here, so we'll go over the first part first. <laughs> So as you see, we're not just playing regular power chords on those first three chords, the B, the G, and the D. We're doing some movement there, and we're kind of playing the variations of some power chords with the regular power chords, okay? So we're just moving our fingers, and of course you saw the tabs, uh, what I was playing there. But that just gives the song and the progression just more life. It just gives us something a little bit different than just hanging on regular power chords the entire time. Part two to this little riff here, this progression, we're really doing the exact same thing, but we're ending a little differently. I'm going to end on the G here, okay? We're going to do the entire walk up from the E, the F sharp, to the G here. So let's go over that. It's going to be really exactly the same except for that ending. So let's go over that and I'll throw up the tabs. <laughs> played a regular G at the end because, you know, sometimes you just feel it. And I encourage you, whenever you just feel it, play it. So let's go through the entire progression once more. <laughs> Alright, so you notice that each of these three progressions and riffs, they were in different keys, and there's a good reason for that. Actually, this is extremely important for you if you're wanting to progress as a guitar player, and I'll explain why. But first, I just want to make sure that you have my free Metal Guitar Practice Guide. If you don't have that yet, there's a link in the description of this YouTube video, so go grab your copy of that. If you already have that, but you haven't started my course, Metal Riff Master, which actually there's a whole module catered to power ballads in that course, there's a link in the YouTube description for that as well. So why did I give you these power ballad riffs, all three of them, in different keys? Here's the thing, as metal guitar players, you know, we primarily play hard rock, heavy metal, and different subgenres of metal on this channel here, you know, we have a tendency to go to those lowest notes possible, which is usually 
the E minor if you're in standard tuning or whatever tuning you're in, it's usually that first string. And we kind of hang around that area, this area right here on the fretboard. We, we love this area right here because it's nice and heavy and it's chunky and you know, it's metal, it just sounds great. The problem with that is if you're always playing in that area, all right, you're only gonna be playing chords that go with those chords in this area, which are usually that E minor. Again, if you're in standard tuning like I am. So what happens is you only learn those chords that go with that key. Now you might jump over and play an F every now and then, maybe an A minor if we're lucky, so you'll learn those patterns as well. But then you're kind of stuck learning just those progressions, just the chords that fit with those progressions there and you tend to forget about the rest of the fretboard that hey there are other notes on your guitar <laughs> there are other strings there are other frets and i just want you to get used to playing in those different areas which is why i started out that first power ballad riff in the key of d minor now a lot of people may play in d minor and say well i'll just i'll drop tune or down tune that's fine but you're kind of missing my point here my point is that your fingers are going to a different place on your fretboard that they may not be used to going to and you may be playing chords especially like that that b flat and that c and that d minor that progression there you're playing something just a little different so i say that only to encourage you to play around throughout the fretboard don't limit yourself to just this area up here just the heaviest notes possible yeah, those are great, and maybe the majority of the music you you write is going to be in that area, and that's fine. It's nice and chunky and just sounds great. It's metal. However, make sure you venture out from time to time and play some more chords throughout the fretboard. Play some more notes throughout the fretboard. Hey, start a song in C sharp minor. Heck, start a song in the key of E flat. You know, I mentioned my, my course, Metal Riff Master, earlier. I've actually got some riffs in that course, they are in E flat. Not a key that you would typically play if you're in standard tuning, right? But I do that, again, with a purpose because I want you to progress as a guitar player. And that's a good way to do it, is just learning your fretboard, learning it really well, and not just the notes that you're comfortable and used to playing, but kind of venturing out and playing some other chords, some other progressions, and other notes. So that's kind of my little soapbox on helping you get better and learn your fretboard on the guitar a little bit better. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Power ballads, they're just awesome, kind of brings us back to those really awesome 80s moments and if you're like me and you grew up in the 80s hey it was just a really cool era and i think it's still alive today because hey we all listen to power ballads and if you're still watching this there's a good chance you're probably going to go listen to some warrant or winger or i don't know maybe even bon jovi who knows now some of you are like hey jason don't curse on camera man you said bon jovi i'm totally kidding hey you living on a prayer that's pretty awesome Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any questions you have in the comments or any comments you have in the comments. Don't forget the links that I told you about earlier in the YouTube description. Make sure you check those out. The link to my free guide, my Metal Riff Master course, and there's some other links in there where you can support me as well. And of course, I appreciate that. Guys, until the next video, as always, keep it metal.